Hi, I'm Sally Longo. Thanks for joining us tonight on Dinner at Eight. We're very fortunate to have as our special guest Rose Levy Barenbaum, who has written nine books, including The Cake Bible, which is in its 47th printing. Her latest book, Heavenly Cakes, just won an IACP award. And tonight she'll be making with us a whipped cream cake that has some interesting roots, and also a beer bread made with porter. Included in our guest tonight would be Savir Saran, celebrated chef, and her assistant, Woody Wolston. If you're a serious foodie, the first name you're going to think of when it comes to baking is Rose Levy Barenbaum, who we are lucky enough to have with us today. She's put out nine cookbooks, one of which the Cake Bible is in its 47th printing. She also has a website, realbakingwithrose.com. Mm -hmm. And, well, actually, it's a blog. Yes, it is Tell a blog. Tell us about that. Well, it's a blog that has created a community of bakers all over the world. And it helps people when they have problems. It also gives them new ideas. And Ooh. it gives me ideas and feedback as well. It's just a wonderful opportunity for bakers to get together and share information. And it must be so satisfying for the people that write on the blog to be able to actually communicate They're with you. They're always shocked that I actually answer them. I think somebody else is answering. <laughs> <laughs> and the new mm -hmm. book is Heavenly Cakes, and in this book there is a photo of every single finished cake? Just about 99% of them, every one that you need to see. Okay. This is which my is, dream book. Which is really mm -hmm. wonderful because mm -hmm. people like to see the finished product so they know how close they got. Mm -hmm. And measuring is so important in baking, I think that's what separates bakers and cooks. Cooks don't like to measure, but bakers do. So what are some important things for measuring? I actually prefer weighing to measuring, and uh -huh. more and more people are getting the idea. Once you go to weighing, you mm -hmm. never go back because it's faster, it's easier, and it's probably more accurate unless you sure. measure very carefully. And these days, accurate scales are so affordable, mm -hmm. there's almost no reason not to. And uh, digital scales, right. So you mm. would even weigh eggs? I weigh everything. People say I weigh air. <laughs> Well, but you know, eggs these days vary so much in size. They do. You might end up right. with three times the amount of egg you wanted if you don't either measure them or mm -hmm. weigh them, and weighing is, is really better. Now, and people are always confused by, do I use a medium egg, a large egg, extra large? True, and the proportion of yolk to whites has changed a great deal. Yolks have gotten smaller, mm -hmm. so if you need a recipe that says four yolks, you may need six or even eight. Oh, wow. And if you weigh them, it's easy to find out. <laughs> Now, Rose, I know you have your own line of bakeware products on Amazon that are available there. What, what do you carry in that line? So far, just three, but my absolute favorite are the Rose's Magic Cake Strips. And They're made of silicone, and they oh. keep the cake more even when it bakes. They wrap around the cake pan. Oh, okay. So and they're actually, they're called Magic Cake pan. Strips. They're called Rose's Heavenly Cake Strips to go with my new book. Oh, perfect. Heavenly Cakes. <laughs> yes. So what other gadgets <laughs> and things do you like using? Well, here's something that's really invaluable. It's a scraper beater blade that for actually will scrape. They, they make it for every single model of a sand mixer. Every, every oh, uh, oh, make really? oh, and model. Wow. Viking, oh. KitchenAid, Cuisinart. All and of it has a rubber... And it scrapes as it mixes, so you don't have to write scrape the sides of the bowl, and you never have to scrape the sides of the bowl. Because some of those are very difficult to scrape. Yes, and yeah. also it takes time away from the beating, so mm. I think this is a good golden. Point. And then the same company is making something called a zest nest. It looks like a petty which, egg. <laughs> what is a petty egg? Oh, I know you what use that. use it on your feet. I hear that okay. doesn't work well, but this works brilliantly okay. because it's the shape of the lemon, so it gets oh. all of the zest out. And it has that same microplane type of greater okay. so that it, it creates perfect little strips and it stores it. So here's where weighing is so perfect because you put it on the scale first, take out the weight, and then oh. you know how much a teaspoon is two grams. So that's Very where it, you know, doing these things makes life so much easier and faster. I've always liked show and tell and equipment, and that's why I created <laughs> a lot of this stuff. Oh, good. Because equipment makes your life easier, mm -hmm. and it's a dream when it's, you're baking. The really thermo pen is the most accurate thermometer, and this one even is accurate to a, a fraction, a decimal mm. point. I haven't seen so that you one know, before. Because so many things in baking are dependent on temperature. Mm -hmm. I also love the perfect beakers. I worked with this guy free of charge to make sure that it would be exact because no other beaker that I found or measure mm -hmm. for, for liquid is right on the target. And this one, the weight and the volume just perfectly what it says it is. And you would trust it without weighing? 
Oh. You know, for liquid, sometimes I would weigh, I would use the volume, you went, but honestly, I tend to weigh a lot of things. <laughs> and then here, another thing that's very important is ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, I consider flour to be the soul of baking. Mm. And the type of flour that you use is vital. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't just use all-purpose. It has to be specified in the recipe. Is it bleached or unbleached, which makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And this flour actually has my face on it because I'm so <laughs> proud of this bread flour. They call it Better mm -hmm. for Bread. It's a gold medal flour. And it's unbleached because for bread, you want unbleached. Okay. It makes it stronger and higher protein. Oh, and these are the perfect measuring cups for dry measure oh. that also are so beautifully designed. They have, mm -hmm. it's embossed the amounts right into the handle so that you never will have it in a dishwasher. You won't have it disappear. I've had that problem. <laughs> for dry ingredients, we don't happen to have a flat blade here right now, but well, of course, they also make the measuring spoons, which I work with oh. them to make accurate from a dash, the eighth of a teaspoon, all the way up to two tablespoons. And then you would use this level to level off the That's really handy. spoon or the cup. I'd like to introduce my dear friend, Chef Suvira Saran. Chef. Well, you are. I mean, he has two restaurants, plus many books to come. Oh. One already, two. Two, yeah. Hmm, okay. Well, Severe has kindly invited me here to upstate New York for several events, and he's going to be the one to introduce me. Hi, Rose. Hello. There's no Rose like this Rose for me, and it's the best Rose on the planet. And I know I'm he so means it. And I'm so happy to share Rose with all of you. She's the diva of breads, diva of desserts, diva of everything magical that you can eat, and it's an mm -hmm. honor to have you in North Country with us. And you're making us beer bread today, right? Yes, it's one of my favorite breads to make. Not well, only because it. it's so versatile, I hope so. But it's so easy to make because you can make it in a food processor. And are these eggs? In the no, food processor? we start off with flour. This is better for bread flour. With which roses is, face yeah, on it. Yeah, because it's my sponsor for and my And if blog. you trust it, I'll buy it. Good. You'll be very happy with it. And I, I always like to use a little bit of whole wheat flour to go with the bread, with the bread flour because and why? it accentuates the flavor. I'm adding sugar. I like to use malt also instead, malt powder, which is not sweet, but yeast loves it. And this is the yeast. And actually, I use instant yeast, which comes in many brands and forms, but you can add it directly to the flour. But if you do use an active dry that's not instant, what you should do is use one and a quarter times the amount, and that because it's not as lively. And I see that you're omitting the f salt for now. Yeah, Isn't there some story about yeast and salt not being yeah. the best friends? If you were to, <laughs> sort of, because if you put salt directly with yeast, it will kill the yeast, ah, so you even have to when they're in the dry it? state. So actually, the beer is usually very cold, and this is another reason why it's so good to weigh it, because when you weigh it, you don't have all the foam. If you try measuring it, you have the head, and you may not have the right amount. Ah. But you see, bread is so forgiving that you can very easily just adjust making it more moist or more dry by adding more flour. I prefer to weigh it, then I don't have to do anything at all. Are your breads more so, forgiving than you? You're very exact. If I'm not <coughs> forgiving, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you are mischievous. Uh, so you're the, the most, you're a master in? of mischievous. So this is the salt because now the yeast is protected by the flour. And here's the cold beer. So because if it gets too hot from the friction of the blades, what happens is that it will kill the yeast again. Uh, uh, uh. So, but this is all very little to know because uh, look, all I'm doing, I'm using dark beer, Guinness stout, porter, and by the time you add it all, it starts cleaning the bowl and then you just let it go for 45 seconds and you'll see perfect texture. And is it Watch customary this. to drink two bottles of beer before making the bread? Not for me. You I don't like two. drinking beer, I just like eating beer. Uh, I thought you were drinking two bottles. So this is good. Whatever and gave you that impression? <laughs> your <laughs> eyes. But so in less than two minutes we are done. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you, Rose, you for teaching me. You haven't baked the bread, but you've That's made easy. it. That's easy. I saw how you did it. Good point. The bread, after 45 seconds, has cleaned the bowl because we, we weighed everything so we don't need to adjust it. And now we can just pull it out. Oops. <laughs> And you see how elastic it is? And tacky. And tacky, which means that it won't stick to your fingers. It will just feel like it's about to. Okay. And now, if I need a little bit of flour to keep it from sticking, I rub it in my hands and just knead it by hand to finish it off. And now, I put it in a bowl and I mark the side. And this is the bread that, the dough that we already see, made. See, it's rose. Yeah. It, we put rose the is tape. rosing bread. We rising put, bread. We put the tape where double the height would be so we know and don't Excellent. have to remember. See, feel how soft this is. Oh, it's softer than your skin, Rose. 
Have you tried feeling my skin recently? <laughs> <laughs> and you can see how it's full of air. In fact, if it gets more than double, you want to punch it down. Full of bubbles. So this is where you take out your anger, Rose? I don't have any anger, Suvira. You are just... <laughs> but if I smell. did, it would eliminate it all. Yeah, I'm it is therapeutic, isn't it? It is. Baking makes you feel good. If you're angry or upset and you bake, it, it goes away. I mean, just feel this. It's and this dream. is beautiful. This. Yeah, and you go like this to make, so you keep large holes from forming. And then you just brush off any excess flour and you shape it into a loaf. Uh. Don't worry about a few folds that will all disappear and during they look beautiful the final too. rise. Oh, yeah, you don't want bread to look like plastic. You want it to look like homemade bread. And with your thumbs, you press it in like that. And, and then, then you fold it down on the yeah, sides? Yeah, fold it down, and then... This greased pan is ready. If it doesn't fit, ready. yeah, you grease the pan lightly, and then you can press it in, and you let it rise for about an hour, an hour and a half, until it comes Voila. up above the side, and you have this wonderful, delicious two minute homemade bread. bread. So forget artisanal bread in five minutes, we have Rose's two-minute bread. Now I have two competing mm. friends making great bread. Thank you, Rose. You're a blessed man. <laughs> Rose, you were smelling this bread just as you were taking it out of the oven. Why? Because nothing smells better than freshly baked mm. bread, don't you agree? Wonderful. And how long did you bake this? It was at 375 and 15 minutes with steam. I put ice cubes in the hot pan underneath. And then 15 minutes approximately without, 15 to 20. The internal temperature has to be around 190 degrees this if you have a thermometer. beautiful. I don't believe in thumping because you can't really know what you're hearing. Oh, can we taste um, it too? Yes, because it's cool now. And the bread continues baking as it's cooling on a rack. And it makes noises so, as oh, it's cooling. Oh, yeah. I love the sound of the bread cooling. They call it the, the song of the bread. Ah. But now it's cool enough to cut. And you can always reheat bread. It's just you want it to finish the baking process. Can you freeze process. them after you made It freezes them? beautifully. I freeze slices, and then I defrost one at a time, and I might put it in the oven. And this is good as freshly baked bread. So is this Rose's wonder, wonder bread, <laughs> wonderful bread? What is it? Who is it? Our mutual friend, Michael Batterbury, said that this is what wonder in its soul really wanted to be. Oh, Michael was, was such a poet. Quote. Yes. Well, we were blessed to have him write both we of were. our forwards. We were siblings. Mm. Really, it's the only forwards that he ever did for a cookbook, and it was for severe. This the same is year. Michael Batterbury, our friend, who's the founder mm -hmm. of Food and Wine magazine and Food Arts yeah. magazine. He introduced me to this rose. That's right. That's where it all began. He said she has thorns too. He never said that. Oh, he, he, ne he, said. Oh, he never said any of the, of the sort because one of the things I kept saying at his memorial is that he never said anything unkind. We should learn that from him. You should, Rose. We, I never I said said anything. We to be polite. Right? <laughs> so give me a taste <laughs> now, of the look, bread now. <laughs> this is a serrated blade. That's what you want to cut it, a bread with, a serrated blade. So teach me, teach but me. But also with cake, I use a serrated blade because it doesn't compress it. And you use your tongue mm -hmm. at all? For That's what? sharp enough. For <laughs> Was that a false laugh? <laughs> oh, look what beautiful wow. texture. This is yeah. how bread should be. Rose, thank this you for teaching is. me how to bake bread. Now you'll always bake be bread. able to do it easily and readily, and it will always be a freezer full for you. And, and your devotee, thank you. Your friends.